Hey friends all over the world, I need you to hear this. You may not hear this in your local church. Your pastor may not be telling you this. They might, I don't know. But you need to know this because many of you have been frustrated. You've been frustrated and you haven't understood what's happening. And I want to explain to you what's been happening to you. And I want to break witchcraft off of your money. Breaking witchcraft off of your money. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Here you go again, talking about something that I don't even know what you're talking about. Listen, let me explain something to you. Many of you don't realize that your finances have been under spiritual attack. Your finances have been under spiritual attack. And you're saying to yourself, man, what in the world is going on? Why is my money so funny? Why is my money so funny? Why, why am I struggling? And I didn't understand this when it happened to me. And I'm going to share a little, little bit of my testimony to explain it to you. I'll share with you what happened to me and how my wife and I dealt with it. I can remember we were working two jobs. My wife worked in corporate America. I worked in corporate America. We were both making really good money. And we couldn't pay our bills. It was almost like we were struggling financially. Can anybody relate to this? You're saying, man, this just doesn't, something doesn't seem right. Then years ago, we were in ministry. And it was like, man, it, it felt like the devourer was loose in our finances. Now, we were actually tithing at the time. And that's what was so strange about it. Malachi 3 talks about rebuking the devourer. He calls Satan the devourer. Jesus calls him a murderer and a thief. Paul the apostle calls him the adversary, the anti -dicos. It means somebody that resists you legally. The writer of the book of Revelation calls Sorry about that. The writer of the book of Revelation calls him the accuser the accuser of the brethren. And so what do I mean by breaking witchcraft off of your finances and, 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 and what is financial witchcraft? What is it when your money is under attack? I'm going to explain it to you because you need to understand it. Many people don't realize that the enemy knows that if he can frustrate you, if he can if he can agitate you, if he can cause you to be caught up emotionally, if he can cause you to turn your attention away from God and turn it to what you're struggling with, he can actually bring you into bondage. And many of you have been enduring, you didn't even know you were, you've been enduring a sort of financial witchcraft, if you will. You've been going through financial witchcraft. Literally, the enemy's been attacking you financially, and it is a form of witchcraft. Let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says, Paul the Apostle is writing to the Thessalonians, and he says to them, he says, listen, he said, I would come to you, but Satan hindered us. He said, I would have come to you, but Satan hindered us. Now, there's a lot of people that have a misappropriated theology connected to a hyper-sovereignty doctrine, a hyper-sovereignty sort of ideology spiritually, meaning that, you know, whatever I'm going through, that, that's, just what, that's just what God's allowing right now. You know, this is God's will. You know, I'm just in a season right now. You know, this is just God. You know, it's God's will. You know, God knew what I could bear. You know, just God just, you know, it's just God, you know, God just put me through a test right now. You know, just God, God, God. And, and, and that's not biblical because the apostles were able to differentiate between God and the devil. They could say, you know what? That's not God. That's Satan. Satan hindered me. We were trying to go to you. It wasn't that God didn't allow me to come to you. It wasn't that in God's decreed will, I couldn't get to you. No, he said, Satan hindered you. Satan hindered us. The enemy 
hindered us. And that word hindered in the Greek means to cut into the path of another. It means to cut into the path of another. You see? And that's what the enemy does financially. Many of you don't realize that your money, your finances have been bound up with witchcraft. Been bound up with, with financial witchcraft because the enemy uses this witchcraft. Let me give you an example. Let's say, for example, you want to go to a certain school. And then you got accepted into a school, you got a scholarship for the school, but all of a sudden you go to the registration and your scholarship didn't come through. Or something didn't, something was wrong, there was a miscommunication, now you can't enroll in the school. How many know that's, that's the enemy? Or you were trying to get your visa and the, all the visa requirements and then something happened with the payment for the visa and this and this and that, it didn't go through. A lot of people are going through this right now, friends. And I'm telling you, we went through it. So anyway, let me give you an example. So so at this time, I was a published author, and things were going well. And I connected with someone. And this is another thing. That's, you got to understand that who you connect with is important. You don't let anybody into your home, anybody into your life. And I had allowed someone into my life that had a spirit of poverty on them. And what happened was, every time we needed to sort of progress and do something, the funds just weren't there. The funds just weren't there, no matter what. It was like, and I looked at Marvin and I said, something is wrong. You know, it's one thing to go through a dry season and a dry patch, but this is something else. We discern by the Spirit of God that this was something else. And I said to my wife, I said, something is wrong. And she said, Keenan, we need to pray. And I said, let's pray. So we begin to pray. As we begin to pray, my wife, who's a seer, she saw, she saw literally all the things we needed, cars, finances, they were caught up in a spider's web. They were caught up in the spider's web. And so and so when she saw that, I discerned by the Holy Ghost, you know what, I need to respond to this. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over that hindering spirit in our finances. And I break the power of that witchcraft. Do you know that 30 minutes later, 30 minutes later, Literally, 30 minutes later, we got a phone call and our money had been released. And that's how I understood that it was a spiritual thing. So I want to pray for you because there's two things you got to do. Number one, you got to pray. You got to pray. You got to pray and you have to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you and allow the Holy Spirit to show you what's going on with your life. Come on, somebody. And number two, you got to give. Because if you're not a giver, what happens is that you're not protected financially. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So I'm going to pray for you real quick here. And I need you to do this. If you know somebody who's struggling with this, tag them. You don't have to call their name. Well, you do got to call them, but just tag them. If you know somebody that could benefit from this word or would find this interesting, I want you to tag that person. And then I want you to share this with somebody else. So right now, I take authority over the spirit of witchcraft that's been literally consuming your finances. The word devour in Malachi 3 means to consume or to destroy. And I take authority over the spirit of the consumer, the spirit of the devourer that has been eating away at your pocket, eating away at your money, eating away at your savings, eating away at your retirement, eating away at your resources. Somebody, every time your car always breaks down, your, your AC always goes out. How many understand that's the devouring spirit? And right now I take authority in Jesus' name over the powers of darkness that have been arresting you financially and we destroy every money-stealing altar off 
of your bloodline and off of your life and break every agreement with poverty that's given the enemy, the antidikos, the, the adversary, the antidikos in Greek, that gives him the legal grounds to confiscate what is rightfully yours. In the name of Jesus, we break the power. Right now, I want you to pray a simple prayer. Lord, teach me how to prosper. And not only that, Lord, show me, teach me how to be a giver. Because I'm going to tell you something, it's not something that comes naturally to us. Human beings are naturally selfish. So being a giver is not in our natural repertoire. We need the power of God to become givers according to his standard. And I want to challenge you. When my wife and I sold that seed, we said, you know what? We're going to take authority over this thing. And in response and in obedience, we said, we're going to actually act in faith to see what we've sown come to pass. We literally saw breakthrough and miracles in our finances. And I'm telling you right now, this is the last day, the last day that you're going to struggle financially. This is the last day you're going to be broke, busted, and disgusted. Why? Because right now we take authority over the accuser of the brethren. We take authority over the accuser of the brethren. Friends, let me tell you something. Don't let the devil cheat you out of this word because what the devil will do is come and say, well, no, that ain't, he don't listen to him. That, no, that ain't your problem. That ain't what, you already blessed. You don't need to worry about none of that. I used to be like that and I struggled. I used to be like that and I struggled because I wouldn't hear the prophet. I wouldn't hear the word of the Lord coming to me to deliver me. And I'm telling you right now that that spirit that has kept you in financial bondage, has kept you in captivity. In fact, Lord, we just decree right now the release of finances. We decree the release of finances that have been tangled up with witchcraft. Every juju, every santeria, every muti, every sangoma, every voodoo, every obia, whatever the witchcraft is. Come on, somebody, Nordic witchcraft, in Jesus' name. Every form of witchcraft and voodoo and juju that has been attacking your finances, we break it right now in the name of Jesus. And I command what has been given to you by God to be loosed in the name of Jesus. To be loosed in Jesus' name. The Bible says he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater and bread for your food, 2 Corinthians 9, 8. So, Father, we thank you right now that whatever has tangled and, and has entrenched us financially, we break the power of the evil one in the mighty name of Jesus. We break the power of the evil one off of your life in Jesus' mighty name. That the glory of the Lord will touch you right now, touch your finances, touch every part of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Friends, I'm telling you, listen to God, respond to him. And if the Lord prompts you, go to our website, keenanbridges.com and just be obedient. That's all you got to do. Just be obedient and do what God has told you to do. I love you. Share this video. Remember, Jesus is Lord.